heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people and welcome to 3ABN Today. My name is C.A. Murray. And allow me once again to thank you for sharing just a little of your day with us, to thank you for your love, your prayers, your support of Three Angels Broadcasting Network as we seek to take the good news of the soon coming of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Hope you've got some time to listen today because we've got a very good program and one that you may want to take advantage of ere uh, the day is done. Um, we're going to be talking about Herbert Fletcher University, which is a very unique school of learning that we are going to talk about today. My guests are David Siegelnitzky. Did I get that Hello. right, David? Yes. Yeah, perfect. I love that name, Siegelnitzky. It just kind of flows. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> and Carlos Robles. Good to have you here, man. Thank you. And Carlos, Thanks. good to have you here. Also, they are respectively, David is president of Herbert Fletcher, and Carlos is director of Academ director of the academic office, so that would be Academic Affairs, Herbert Fletcher University. Good to have you guys here. I want to get right in before we go to our music, because you are headquartered in? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, and in the city of? Mayagüez. But you are an online university, and we want to talk about what all that means and what all that entails, and we can say Praise the Lord, fully recognized and accredited by the government of Puerto Rico. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and we're happy for that. Want to get some history on, on you both as individuals before we talk about the school, because it's been a little while since you've been here, um, a few years as a matter of fact, and yeah. I think I had the pleasure of doing an interview then, that interview at that time. You are originally from? I was born in Argentina. Yeah, but you kind of lived all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After leaving Argentina, you went where? After Argentina, I went to Israel. Israel, for how many years? For um, almost 14 years. Wow, good little while. Yeah. In, involved in education there also? No, I was, uh, I went there to study, uh -huh. and then I worked in the area of research and uh -huh. development. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your history really is kind of in academia. Uh, I studied engineering biotechnology, so uh -huh. I'm an engineer. Ah. Uh, so I worked in Israel in that area mm -hmm. when I was there for uh, several years. The church called me to come to the Inter-American Division to work in the area of um, uh, the academic area mm -hmm. to teach. Ah. So uh, that was my first exposure to ah, teaching. I, I was see. not an academic person, I was a researcher. Yes, yes, yes. Was the change easy for you? Or, and I say that because I have great respect for, for, for teachers. Um, first of all, it's ministry, you, because you're imparting knowledge uh, to young minds, which are also hopefully shaping them to be good citizens here and to prepare for uh, the world that is to come. So I have great respect. Was it an easy change to go from research to, to the classroom setting? I wouldn't want to be a student of myself at that time. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry if some of my students are watching me, please, I'm sorry for that. Uh, no, it's not easy. Uh, what, you don't know how to do things. You are just trying to yeah. improvise. Yes. That's not a good thing. Uh, no, you're kind thing. of learning on the fly. Yeah. yeah. So this is why I had to learn to study something about education later on to be a better educator. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I did that. Let me ask this, David. Did you grow up in Avenue's home? I was born Seventh-day Adventist, yes. Uh -huh, we are uh -huh. seven brothers and sisters, all oh, of us. Good size family. Yeah. Uh -huh. You are aware in that, that continuum of brothers and sisters? I'm the sisters. third. The third? Yeah. Okay, sort of in the middle. How about yeah. the middle? Yeah, they yeah. say the middle child can always be a little different, you know, because you got some above you, you got some below you, you know, so yeah. the middle child can go in any direction, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So I, for instance, I was spoiled in that area, <laughs> that, that sense, yes. <laughs> when did the idea of a personal relationship with God come to, to your life? As a young person, as uh, when you were a little older? No, as a young person, I was. Um, 
fairly um, regular Seventh day Adventist, going every Sabbath to church mm -hmm. and participating in Sabbath school and um, uh, preaching also. And, uh -huh. I mean, I, I was a regular person without a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I think that that was, um, I, I discovered Jesus as a personal savior later on. I yes. think I was about uh, 20 something years old when ah. I, I became really aware of uh, who am I and why I, I am Seventh-day Adventist because mm -hmm. I don't need to. This is not something that you have to if you don't want to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then I True. really wanted to uh -huh. at that time. Uh -huh. And then from them I feel that I am Adventist. Praise the Lord. <laughs> since that time. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Carlos, say, now you're from Puerto Rico. Yes, I am. Praise the Lord. Um, Adventist home growing up? Third generation Adventist. Oh, wow. Okay, deep roots. That's right. Brothers and sisters? Uh, one sister. Just one sister? Yes. Older or younger? Older. Uh -huh, same with me. One sister, older. Not that much older, about a year and a half. The older. Um, so you grew up in Adventist home. Always involved in education? Um, yes, always involved with youth. Uh -huh. uh, since I was little, I was, I was preaching, I was in the Pathfinders, I was a Master Guide, I was in a lot of things in church. Okay, okay, you came but, up the route, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then I started um, studying um, to be a teacher, an English teacher. Mm. And I graduated and began in our educa Adventist educational system. Okay, did you go to Antillian? Yes, I did. Aha, uh -huh. good school. I got my bachelor's degree there. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, whose idea was um, Fletcher University? In whose mind did that, did that first start? Um, the thing is this, Pastor um, Israel Leto, the president of the Inter-American Division, know him well. went <laughs> to Colombia for a revival week. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody asked him and said, uh, what are you doing for people like me, people that are already adults with family, need to study, but we are not close to a university, an Adventist university, mm -hmm. where we can pursue our studies. What are you doing for people like me, like, mm. like us? Mm -hmm. That was the question. Mm. And that is the beginning of the idea. Then Pastor Leto started to think about this, he took that to the board and the division continued developing that idea mm -hmm. and they took the vote in 2000, long ago, 2007, something like that, mm -hmm. um, to think seriously about building a university, an online, fully online university mm -hmm. in the Inter-American Division. Mm. So the, 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 the start, uh, the energy to start it was a real situation. We had people who want to go back to school but who can't leave their families, leave their jobs, and go to a school that exactly. needed school to sort of come to them. Exactly, that's yeah. the idea. Uh -huh. So the brother laid hands on you. Um, I was, they, they contacted me at the end of uh, 2009 or 10, 2009 I think, mm -hmm. and they asked me to develop the plan uh, which equipment we need, which programs we can do, which, um, um, I mean, skills for people we need, and, mm -hmm. and to develop the, the whole skeleton. Mm -hmm. So I'm the first employee of that university. Oh, I see. <laughs> Since 2000 and something, yeah, yeah, I'm the first employee. Well, to develop, I think, the infrastructure, you need an engineer kind of mind, so I guess you'd be the perfect, the perfect fit. <laughs> Did you know Pastor Leto? Yeah, I knew him. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. since long ago. Okay, very good. Um, the thing is this, I, in, in my, my um, academic experience is this, I am systems analyst, later on I did engineering in biotechnology, mm -hmm. later on software engineering, a master's degree in uh, the, um, uh, systems analysis, then master's degree in educational systems, uh -huh. and then the PhD. Mm -hmm. So all that brought me to a point where I think I knew what to do. <laughs> <laughs> because, Emphasis on I thought I knew what to do. Well, indeed. Well, you can't be sure. Yes. Because yes, yes. always there is a person that can do things better than you. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that in the world there are people much smarter than me and, and wiser than me and, and faster than me to yes, do things. Yes. And they can do better than me. I, I, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that my background in the area of uh, computer science mm -hmm. and my background in the area of education because by then I was already I had already a master's degree in, in education mm -hmm. 
So these two things gave me an advantage that few people have. Mm -hmm. You don't have people coming from two different areas with that expertise. Yes, yes. yes so yes. Um, that was an advantage I had. It's amazing, and I hear this over and over again, how God fills out your resume before you even know it. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he gives you these experiences, and at the right time and the right place, someone calls upon those experiences, and you have the right, I did that, and I did that, and I did that. Oh, that's what we need. You know, and, 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 right. and now the Lord will prepare you, even though you, you may not be aware of it, but at the right time, it, it, and you're married and have a family. I have a family, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's amazing that you had time to have a family with all those degrees, man. You spent a lot of time in school, so we, we praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> this is a blessing. Let mm -hmm. me tell you this. This is not because um, sometimes people think that uh, you are a smart person because you did this and that and that, and you have a long resume. This is not because of that. This is because you have a supporting family. Uh -huh. If you don't have a supporting wife, forget about this. Yes. You will never, ever be able to get something like this. Well said. So the wife is... is something important for me. Mm -hmm. uh, she did absolutely everything to make sure that I will reach the goals. Uh -huh. And also my kids. I have two children. Mm -hmm. um, they are grown children already, but uh, they uh, were very much supportive. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that made um, the, 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 the favorable conditions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to study. Because I remember that I always worked full time all the time, yeah. all my life. Mm -hmm. And I went to study in the nights. So I uh, used yes. to leave home at about uh, 6.30 in the morning and be back home at about 10.30, 11 p.m. Mm. Because working and then studying. Working yeah. and then university and mm -hmm. then home. Mm -hmm. So um, that is not easy. Mm. Unless you have a supporting wife, Yes. first of all, and supporting family yeah. after that. And praise the Lord he gave And, and the blessing of God, because yes. you can dream as much as you wish. If God doesn't bless you, forget mm -hmm. about that, mm -hmm. you'll never have that. Well said, well said. You know, I, I, and I always say this, have, having studied, um, you don't necessarily have to be a genius to get advanced degrees, even a PhD, but you do have to maintain focus. Exactly. You've got, it's, 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 a, it's a testament to being able to stick to something. If you stay at it, you can get the degree. There are some who, who sail through because they, they're just brilliant. But, but getting a, a doctorate degree is not necessarily a testament to brilliance. It is a testament to staying with it. That's right. Staying with it, maintaining your focus. And if you maintain your focus and, and, and stay humble and stay prayerful, you can, you, can, you can do it. And as you said, having a family that supports you in that is a, is a, is a good thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. Why did they choose to put um, Herbert Fletcher in Puerto Rico. Uh, the the Inter-American Division, also, well, the headquarters is in, is in the States here, and of course it covers all of the Caribbean. Why Puerto Rico in particular? Um, the division wanted us to be in um, American territory. Ah, uh -huh. um, It is easier for many people to study with us and get recognition in other countries. If you are in oh, other places oh, in the Inter-American uh -huh. Division, some countries will not, I mean, you will need to fight to make sure that your government will recognize that degree. Oh, I see. But if you are coming from the U.S., from mm -hmm. North America, mm -hmm. Puerto Rico is part of North America in that right, sense, right. Um, that is easier. Mm -hmm. So that is the main reason. Yeah, yeah, and and knowing how sometimes the, the the countries, particularly in Central America, can pick at each other. If you got a degree in Guatemala, then Nicaragua said, "No, we don't want that," or El Salvador, <laughs> "Now we don't want that kind of thing." Right. So we just solve it, put it in the United States, and everything <laughs> everything is fine. And yeah. we praise the Lord for that. I want to go to our music. Then I want to come back and sort of really dive into this uh, and and talk a little bit more with, with Carlos. Also, um, our music today is coming from. A uh, good friend of the ministry and a good personal friend, and that's Neville Peter. And uh, he sings, he plays, he's a godly young man, and he's going to be doing Let It Rain. To deliver and restore Let your love Wash over me From where 
your spirit is I am free to bless your holy name so let it rain let it rain oh Jesus sing with me let it rain presence to deliver and restore let your love wash over me for where your spirit is I am free to bless your holy name Lord let it rain let it rain Renew my heart again I'm longing for your hand Quench my thirsty soul In this dry and barren land The latter rain it must fall In these last and evil days and I know it will cause me pain when I bless your name. But let it rain, Lord, let it pour. I'm longing for your presence to deliver and restore. Lord, let your love wash over me for where your spirit is i am free to bless your holy name lord let it rain let it rain the light of rain it must fall in these last and evil days and i know it will cause me pain when i bless your name jesus but let it rain lord let it rain lord let it rain Lord, let it rain. Oh, even if it causes pain, even if it causes pain, Lord, if it causes pain, let it rain. Oh, the latter rain, it must fall in these last and evil days. I know it will cause me pain when I bless your name, but Lord, let it rain, Lord, let it rain, let it rain down in my life, let it rain down in my soul, let And thank you, Navelle Peter. Um, let it rain. Very, very well done. We're talking with David Sigelnitsky and Carlos Robles. David is the president of Herbert Fletcher University. And I need to say Dr. Sigelnitsky, <laughs> um, to be fair. And, and, and Carlos, um, and we, family also, you told me, Carlos. Um, husband of one wife. That's right. Praise the Lord. How many children? Uh, none yet. None yet. Okay. Well, Stay at it. Lord of bless. <laughs> <laughs> it will come. It will come. <laughs> it will come. Um, you went to school at Antillian, and then where uh, where did you do your, your My graduate masters. work? Mm -hmm. My master's, I did it at Walden University. Mm -hmm. 
in higher education uh -huh. with a specialist uh, with a degree in, in online education. Ah, okay. So that's your specialty. And now I'm in my PhD. Oh, bless the Lord. In online leadership and online and distance education. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, where are you studying? Uh, my PhD is in 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 the University of Interamerica in Puerto Rico. Okay, okay, so you're right there on the island. Very yeah. good, excellent. So we, we found out how Dr. David uh, got roped into this. How did you come to get uh, hooked up, dare we say, with, with Fletcher University? Well, God has strange ways of directing us where, we, where he wants us. Indeed. Uh, I was preaching in a church and uh, a colleague uh, saw me preaching and she told me, do you know I work for this university? You might want to give me, give me your resume. I said, well, why would I want to do that? Uh, I'm, I'm teaching, um, I've been 15 years teaching comfortably. Mm -hmm. And then she told me, uh, you better pray about this. And I said, that's interesting. Never, mm -hmm. Nobody told me that ever. So I started, I sent my resume and I started praying. <laughs> and immediately I received a call. Uh, we need you and your wife to come to the university because we want to talk to you. And I said, okay, yeah. uh, that's good, I mm -hmm. think. So we went both. Um, and back and forth, uh, I, I mentioned this before to Dr. Siganitsky, but I did not want to work for the university. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable. Uh, I, was, I was in a place that I was comfortable. I've been teaching for 15 years. You were in Puerto Rico already? Yes, uh -huh. teaching English uh -huh. for the educational system. Ah, okay. And in the public system? In the public system. Oh, okay. And I said, oh, so I, I, I said to God, God, if you really want me to go, um, you need to, to tell me, give me a sign. Mm. And he gave me the sign. I said, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, maybe, not maybe, not, not, not that fast. Maybe, maybe you need to, 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 to take it easy. Give me, give me another sign so I can be very, very sure uh -huh. that this is what you want me. Double, please. And Indeed. that same day, the same day the sign came true. Uh, see, that's the thing about God when you ask for those signs. You know, if he wants you to come, he'll give you the sign. Yes. And he'll make it really, really clear that that's a sign. And when he yeah. says, I want you to do this, um, we need to do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I did not feel comfortable saying no. Uh -huh. So I immediately called back and I said, okay, uh, I, I, what do you mean, need me to do? Wow. And here I am. Did you, know, did you know David already? No. Oh, you did not? Okay. That was the most frightening thing I've ever done. How so? Because he was, my, he was the one that interviewed me. Ah. And I said, okay, he comes from the division. He's a doctor. He's, yeah. he's, he's, this is his place. Yeah. And, and I'm here. I don't know what to do. And, but I thank the Lord that it happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were teaching English, but were you working in this online area or are you studying in this online area already or that, that came post your call to the university? That came after. Uh -huh. I've always been a fan of technology. Uh -huh. uh, those who know me, my students and, 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 and those that have seen me, they know that every time that I went to class, there was something related to technology, mm -hmm. something new. Mm -hmm. And it, when I received the call, I said, oh, that's interesting because God has always led me to technology and, and it was in the right lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a nice combination though. Um, you know, your specialty and, and David's specialty uh, kind of make for a nice leadership core uh, when you're trying to start, start out something like this. How does one, okay, we got this idea. We want to do an online school here. How do you, what's the first thing that you do? You, you, obviously you have a, a physical building where you, you, that houses what you do. So how do, we, how do we begin? How do we start? What, building a university? Yeah, and an online, I mean, we, we start a regular university, we put one brick in front of another, we put some mortar on it, put another brick, and then we get a school. But this is different. How do you, how do you begin? How do you start? <laughs> Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You explain. <laughs> first, because we did it together. So. Uh, first, you need to be ready to do a lot of work, uh -huh. a lot of hard work. Um, the documentation for, for a university that's completely online, that doesn't have any physical campus, mm -hmm. um, the government is going to start to, to, to get worried. Yeah. 
because yeah. in, in regular education, you have a campus, you have a library, you have a place where you can see the teachers and everything. But mm -hmm. in distance education, the government is always trembling because there's a lot of um, uh, uh, issues on the matter of how, how do I know that you're doing this? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And specifically when we were um, delivering the documents to the government of Puerto Rico, they, they at one point they set us aside and they said, listen, we, we have an issue here. The issue is, this is the first university that's completely online. And we have a lot of requirements for you that we don't know how to deal with. So in Puerto Rico, this never existed before? There, there has been, there's online education, but uh -huh. there's always with the component that there's a university that has a campus. Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, They have a library, uh -huh. they have courses. Sure, and, sure. And, mm -hmm. But uh, completely online, they yeah. started saying us, and said, well, we need to take you as an example. Okay, so, see, that makes it tough because you're going to be the, the test tube baby now. Yes. Yeah, you're going to be, this, yeah. This is a problem because, you know, as, as Carlos said already, they don't have any other place to compare you right. with. Right, you're it. And all the documentation <laughs> they require includes buildings and many other, many mm -hmm. other um, mm -hmm. things that we, we don't have and we'll never have. Right. So this is one thing and one big problem. The second problem is the Adventist system doesn't have any online university. So we are having the same trouble with the Seventh-day Adventist education system ah, okay. because we are a weird academic monster. Yes, yes. I mean, something that never existed before. Right. So they are asking for things that are very difficult to fulfill, but we have many things that they cannot evaluate. True, because there's no pattern. And there's when no they come, manual. When, You're it. Of course. Yeah. When they come for an evaluation, it's hard to find the right person to evaluate you. <laughs> exactly. That, that happened with the Council of Education of Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. they, they, we sent the documents, and they did not send us a date immediately that they were going to visit us. And we started calling, what, is there something going on? And they said, we are looking for someone and we cannot find it in Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. So they started looking in the States, in the United States, mm -hmm. for people that knew about this so that they can come to Puerto Rico and evaluate us. Okay. And okay. in the visit that they made, there was, I think it was two, two, two of the evaluators came from the States. No, one from the uh, States, one, the one, one from... from... One came from the States and, and she was... Uh, I, I was a doctor. Uh, she was a lady, a very uh, special lady, and and she was kind of leading the way uh -huh. because they were behind her. Okay, you know about this. We're going to follow you. I see, I see, I see. Now, so you you have that with the 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 secular government. You also have that with the church mm -hmm. because, of course, you want to be recognized by the church. But since they don't have anybody either, how did you work with that? How did how did you deal with the, with the church? Evaluating so that you could be accredited, you know, by, by the Adventist Church. Well, we have some people that are very well prepared in that area too. Uh -huh. uh, we don't have any fully online and only online university in in the church around the world. Mm. But we have some people that in the last few years finished their degree in that area. Ah, okay. So they had to pick the person that has some experience also mm -hmm. because degree is not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need some experience, some yeah. knowledge. Yeah, sure. And um, so they, they brought one person from Andrews, and, and the other two were in the educational area, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they did the best they could. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is fabulous. So when, when Dr. Israel Leto dropped this on you, he really laid a heavy burden on you because you're starting something that has no pattern, that has no... There's no way you can go and look and say, let's, well, let's follow that pattern. You're building it from the ground up. Exactly, yeah. exactly, because I didn't have that experience before. I mean, right. how many people do you know in the world, because you know many people around the world, how many people you know that built a university from scratch, from nothing, from yeah. zero? Mm -hmm. Very few. Very few. How many of them built a university fully online? Yes. With all the infrastructure, paperwork, mm -hmm. knowledge, um, okay. skills needed for, for every different function and everything. Yeah. How many you know? Yeah. And the Perhaps quality. not too many. Not too many. Like zero. <laughs> kind of zero. <laughs> See, it's, it, this, 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 is, this is a major thing um, because you're starting something totally from scratch. Now, are there many online universities in existence now, today? Is that it? We have, we have several online universities mm -hmm. um, around the world, not 
I mean, several universities that have an online department mm -hmm. and they teach fully online. This is what we have. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the infrastructure is mixed. Yes. You have both. Mm -hmm. But only online university, fully online university, I don't think we have too many. Okay. So there's not, there's not a lot. So you don't really have like a little a club that can get together and encourage each other. No, no, no. Just, <laughs> I know, wish we there, had There are that. groups of university presidents who come together and encourage each other because they have some commonality. But you guys are kind of out there swimming in the, a very big ocean and evidently doing a pretty good job. So we praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. For and, and by the way, we are building a, now um, a network in the Inter-American Division uh, among the 14 universities we have. Uh, in different areas, uh -huh. student development and um, curriculum and so on. One of the areas is online um, education that in includes also the online uh, technology you need for that. And, mm -hmm. and Carlos is the coordinator for that area. Mm -hmm. So um, we are trying to develop that more and more mm -hmm. in our division and most likely in the rest of the world in future. Yeah, give me an idea of, of how much staff you have. <laughs> That's different to say. Yeah. Um, we have. Uh, we're because your staff is not all in Puerto Rico. They're everywhere. Well, we yeah. have we have an office in in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and that is seven people, right? Seven people. Seven okay. people. Mm -hmm. We have in Puerto Rico people working from home from different places uh -huh. in, the, in the island. We have about three. No, um, four. Four. Yeah. Four people. And then we have people in the South American division and other places. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have about 20 more, 20 29, 29, 29 professors around mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. Not only professors, because we have oh, yeah. uh, the web development and, exactly. and people working for us from their own yeah. places. See, this is, this is a fabulous thing. Um, it, it, it piques my interest in that since you're not bringing everybody together to a campus, your professors, your teaching staff is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, is everywhere. Um, and your student body is everywhere. Exactly. So now your job is, co is to connect professors who could be anywhere with a student who could be anywhere. And, and that's, that's your job. That's how university functions. So let's, let's walk through that. Let's, let's answer the question, what kind of courses do you offer? I'm a student, I'm a person at home, I want to get education, I cannot leave, I contact you, what is available to me? Yeah, oh, Carlos is the academic uh, director, so I will... Okay. I will. We have a, a couple of programs that might interest. Uh, there's one that we are, we are pretty um, uh, emphatic about it, because it's, it's a an, an groundbreaking master's degree, and that master's degree is in online instructional design. Mm -hmm. They're not Online education is growing quickly in every university, especially in the United States. Mm -hmm. And, and there are not really a lot of people that are prepared in, an, in that area, specific area. Mm -hmm. Some people think that just to be an online professor, you need to, okay, I'll take my courses in PowerPoint and in Microsoft Word and I'll put them online and have students read it. And that won't work. Yeah, It's a specific uh, way of teaching that needs to be coordinated. Mm. And, and we are providing this master's degree to help people on how they could transfer their knowledge in education or in any, any knowledge. Could be nursing, could be a pastor, could be anything. And transfer that into an effective and, and full of uh, good quality course in online. Yeah. And that, that's one of the programs. Mm -hmm. the other, another program that we're really proud of is the church administration and, and leadership. Aha. Uh -huh. And that is to help anyone that wants to, to be um, proficient in administration and, and be a good leader of any institution, uh, any for, uh, non-for-profit institution or mm -hmm. church institution, so that they can be um, effective in what they, they want to do for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I find this fascinating. My next question would be, how do you evaluate your faculty. In other words, some, someone comes to you or you contact someone who has a degree in field X. How do you know, and I'm saying this because in, in all endeavors that humans do, you have good, better, best. You have good lawyers, you got better lawyers, you got bad lawyers, you got good teachers, you got bad teachers, you, you know. How do you know that a given person is a fit 
because I may be a good classroom teacher. Doesn't necessarily mean that I can do this online. Right. And as you mentioned, I put up a bunch of PowerPoints, a bunch of pictures, and say, here, take it. You know, that's not what works for you. How do you evaluate? How will you know that this guy is a good fit or this woman is a good fit for what we're trying to do? There is a, a very um, intense process that we go through to accept a professor. Mm -hmm. First, we, we accept their resumes or their curriculums and we analyze them. First of all, they need to be, they have a PhD or a doctor, mm -hmm. doctorate in, in this specific area. And then um, when they start teaching for us, we have evaluations, we have peer evaluations, other professors evaluate other professors, mm -hmm. and we have students' evaluation. Mm. And we also um, constantly, at the administrative <laughs> part, that's my area, we constantly enter the course to see what's going on. Ah. If, there's, if there's too much, in, there's not enough interaction between the students and the professors, we look at the, 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 the comments. And we also do um, student evaluation. At the end of the course, or almost at the end of the course, we give them an, uh, a form that they need to, to present mm -hmm. and tell us how are we doing, how, we, how was the course, how was the professor, how was the integration of faith in that course, was it okay, Were th different topics that we need to guarantee the quality of that course because it, it's nothing if we, if we just provide courses and we don't have integration of faith, mm -hmm. if we don't have um, uh, a good quality core uh, in that course, we're not doing our job well. Mm -hmm. So we evaluate our professors in that way. But, but we also have a training course for every professor. Before you start teaching a course, you have uh -huh. to pass a training. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, this is a must. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a professor may have 20 years experience, uh, but exactly as you said, may not fit within the online environment, mm -hmm. online techniques, mm -hmm. online world. So um, the person will need to have a full training of uh, 10 weeks at least. Oh, wow. And then mm -hmm. um, if they succeed with it's that. It's like a semester mm -hmm. of, of, of training. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. about yeah. a semester. Yeah. And, and it's quite intensive. Yeah. So after that, we know if the person will be able to teach. To teach. Mm -hmm. and and we, uh, may I add, we constantly do also do professional uh, training, ah. additional. Every semester they need to take a course, an online course, the professor, so that we can, um, you know, <laughs> incorporate, incorporate more, more, more yeah. technology and, yeah. and more, more skills mm -hmm. for them to use in the, in the courses. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing is this, you cannot assume that a person with 20 years experience teaching face-to-face -face right. is going to be the perfect online teacher. No, you can't. And this is why out of uh, 10 people that start the training, will finish, will end up with about uh, four, four or five. Four or five. Something okay, like so that, no more than that. Okay. Because usually they get offended. They said, you're not going to teach me how to teach. You can teach me the technology, not how to teach, but mm -hmm. it's not true. It's, it's a combo. Yes. It's, it's a whole package. Mm -hmm. uh, when you learn how to teach, you need to learn a lot of things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And many people do not understand that part. Yeah. So when a person comes to you, they've got to come with a certain modicum of humility because you're re-educating the educator. Yeah. Uh, and he has to be. Because I could be a good, honest, okay, gentlemen, Today we're going to learn this. That does not translate to what's going on online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me tell you this. We are not the only people that do that. Mm -hmm. All online universities, every university that has online department will do that mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh -huh. Every uh -huh. university that, that respects itself will do that. Mm -hmm. And this is something that people don't necessarily understand. It's not because we are um, proud of uh, doing what we do that we mm -hmm. added that training. Right. Every university does it. So that's necessary, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. necessary. Okay, so we are selling our product now. One, all of your faculty is PhD level, so they have a handle on their own material, what they're teaching. Mm. Two, they've gone through specialized training that deals with being able to teach online. Exactly. Three, they are evaluated periodically by peers and students to know that they are making the grade. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are there any other mechanisms put in place to evaluate faculty? 
I mean, those three are enough, really, because you've got a pretty good handle on, on, on what you're, you're dealing with. Um, but is there anything else? Um, when they, after the training, they have to prepare a course. This is part of the training after the 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. They have to prepare to develop a full course. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to check the course and we have to make corrections. And that goes back and forth four or five times. Mm -hmm. Fix this, fix that, fix that. And that is annoying. <laughs> that requires a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, listen, I am the expert in, in my area. Let's say that I am expert in theology, just mm -hmm. to say something. Mm -hmm. And um, how come you tell me what to change? They don't understand that the change is about the organization of the course and the pedagogical components of the course. Mm -hmm. It's not about the content itself. So I said, if you want to present this, you have to present in this way or that other way, but not in this way. So it's very difficult for people to assume that this is why we have out of 10, about four, maybe five people finishing the full training. But once they finish the training, once they start teaching, they understand exactly why we required this or that change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that uh, that is a very comprehensive um, a way to prepare and then to evaluate. Yes. Yes. So that are comes together. Your, I'm sorry. Are most of your faculty in the Inter-American Division, or are they outside of Inter-America and in, in, in Inter-America also? Most may be in the Inter-American Division. Most of them. But we have in all the continents. Uh huh. Uh huh. I mean, all over. Mm -hmm. Your student body, mostly Inter-American, mostly Spanish-speaking, mostly English-speaking, diverse. You know that the it's very diverse. Uh huh. It's very diverse. We have a lot of students, English-speaking students. Mm -hmm. Um, Spanish, a lot of them mm -hmm. at this moment, and we also provide non-academic courses. For example, layman tra training. Uh, uh -huh. At this moment, we're providing a course in a program in for Sabbath school teachers, and we even started a section in French. Mm. And and that's basically the three languages that we're we're pointing at: mm -hmm. Spanish, English, and French, mm -hmm. which covers a fairly wide swath of the world. If you had someone with sort of an eclectic language, is there any way to accommodate them at all? Or is it, I guess, well, I mean, you, someone could come with you with, with Tagalog or, or something. I guess there's no real way to get that in because you don't have the, 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 the personnel in that. But you've, you in, in English, Spanish, and French, you've got a pretty good part of the Western Hemisphere. We're you know, very in limited Australia. in French. Yes. We don't have enough um, faculty and enough people knowing how to develop in French. Mm -hmm. um, but in Spanish and English, everything is bilingual. Mm -hmm. French, we are some limited areas. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. What you offer bachelors? Masters. Masters. Only. Masters. So, so, so you're, at the, you're at the graduate school level. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, not doctors just yet. Not as yet. Not, Not yet. as yet. So it's, it's master's degree. Okay. Well, praise the Lord for that. How big is your student body? You have the number. Uh, at this moment, we are around, uh, rounded up at 300. Ah. It's like 296 students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in both languages, Spanish and English uh -huh, at this moment. Uh -huh. Is that about the average? Is that a little higher, a little lower as, as to what average, as you get average, average wise? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, can you rate it in terms of, you know, in, in, a, in a brick and mortar school, you would, you would say X number of faculty per student or X number of students per faculty member. Does that even calculate in, you know, in, in this kind of setting? Yes, our, our, our equation, let's put it that way, our equation would be like 20 students per, per professor. Okay, okay. That, that's 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 not bad. We have that's maximum. We have a limit, a minimum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, today it's about that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the average. Yeah. Now I, I wasn't quite sure on on your course offerings. Walk me through that again. Um, what do you offer? We have graduate, um, as I mentioned, masters in online instructional design. Uh huh. We have the church administration and leadership program, mm -hmm. and we also offer. Um, um, training courses 
mm. non-academic training courses. Okay. But we are developing new programs too. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so very soon. In the in the graduate program, we we have at this moment we are in the process of of being uh, of submitting two more master's degrees. We also had uh, doctoral programs, but we need to wait a little bit for, for some of the technical aspects about it. Mm -hmm. But we, mm -hmm. are, we are planning to, I don't know if we can mention them. Yeah, you can mention. Um, <laughs> we, because we wanted to start uh, already offering uh, degrees. People are asking for um, doctorate degrees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there are some technical requirements from the um, accrediting bodies. Uh -huh. And this is why we had to wait. Mm -hmm. They are asking for a couple of years after the first graduation. Ah, in uh -huh. order to uh -huh. uh, start submitting the documentation for PhD. And that's why we can't right now. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that, that in, in evaluating universities in particular, a lot of weight is placed on what students are you sending through that are finishing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want a lot of people in queue waiting for their degrees, uh, which is why I said that a doctor's degree is a testament to, to um, focus, because if you, if you stay focused enough, schools don't, you don't get points for having a lot of people in queue waiting for their degree. Mm -hmm. You can't get, you, you want to get them out because mm -hmm. it makes the school look better to say we've graduated X number of students. Exactly. Yeah, so you don't exactly. want to be having this long line of students waiting to get finished. You want them through so that, you know, the resume of the school looks better. So that's coming. But there, there, there are two master's degrees that, that people are asking us for. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we presented those two. Uh -huh. um, one of them is administration and supervision, educational administration and supervision. Uh -huh. And the other one is admi uh, administration and leadership. Uh -huh. So those two are the ones that people are asking a lot for them and that we prepare them and we're mm -hmm. submitting the documents already. For, yeah. For yeah. It to be I suspect a lot of pastors in the field uh, and administrators in the field would kind of like to, to study those kinds of things without having to leave their, their, their charge and responsibility. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. true. Praise the Lord. Is it an expensive thing? You know, it always gets down to shekels. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I would say that this is not expensive. I know that Carlos just finished his um, um, master's not long ago, and now he's in the PhD. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will testify that our prices are about half of uh, what he paid for his master's. One fourth. Already. One, One fourth. One fourth. Wow. My master's was. Um, Twenty-one thousand dollars to that finish. How much? I didn't know. And our master's degree is like six, six thousand. Yeah. Well, we have some some uh, programs with discounts. I mean, if you fulfill some conditions, then you get five percent discount for that, ten percent for that, and oh, so on. Wow. So the price can get as low as can get as low as about six thousand dollar. Yeah, but five something. Mm -hmm. But the reason for for this for such a low price is because if we um, present the price that that. Of, of, of a U.S. degree mm -hmm. for 20, 21000 and we go to Venezuela at this moment, and we say, this is a degree for $21,000, yes, say, you're yeah, crazy, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> and and we go true, to, yeah. to, to Inter-America, mm -hmm. th that's too high, mm -hmm. and that's one of the, of the, the things that, that we were told, that our degrees need to be very low so that uh, our, our, our fellow um, countries can, can afford them. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's such a low price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, consider that a PhD, my PhD cost about seven, 70,000 uh, US dollar in the US. Mm -hmm. I started here in the US. Mm -hmm. um, who will be able to pay that in the Inter-American Division? Right. I mean, we have to be reasonable yes. and think about them mm -hmm. because we want people to be prepared. Yes. We need people to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So that's our mission, mm. that's our vision too. Yes. So uh, we can't think in terms of um, prices uh, here. That's why we do every effort we can in order to make sure that uh, prices are going to be accessible. Mm -hmm. People will be able to study with us. Praise the Lord. And the yeah. only way to do that is to hire people from all over the world and, yes. and to have people well prepared, but with the lowest possible expenses in terms of institution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have just the minimal, minimum uh, people at office and the rest of the people are from home. And I mean, that saves a lot of money. Okay, That's so you're, why you're, you're we can afford that. Exploring ways to keep the costs down yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for education. And of course, the, the, your professors that are in different countries, you're paying them in their money. So it's not, I would, I would suspect. Uh, no, we pay in US dollar, uh -huh. but uh, we have different rates. Uh -huh. Because 
I mean, if you have a professor in the U.S. less than three, four thousand U.S. dollar, they may not want to work. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the Philippines, four thousand U.S. dollar is half year salary. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 You understand? Mm -hmm. so we, we, so. need to, we need to consider yes, that. Yes. And, mm. and they agree with that because for them, I mean, what we pay is reasonable. Mm -hmm. We don't pay the lowest of the lowest. Uh -huh. We pay what is reasonable, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's good too. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing not abusing. work, so you've got to pay them. I mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's not exactly. volunteer. Yeah. yeah. It's and not volunteer at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but that is a good thing because yeah. you, can, you, you may ask people to do exactly what you need yes. because you are paying. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is fair. It is fair. That is fair. I want my salary. You yes. want your salary. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you work and you do the best you can do, yes. you can expect also um, a reasonable salary. But but you have to do the best. Yes, do the best. Yeah. And this is this is the way we think, and this is the way we work. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've 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 been concentrating on you so much. I've not looked at the clock because this is fascinating to me <laughs> uh, that we are getting down to the end. I want to go to the contact information just now, and then we can recalculate our time, and then we can end this because uh, there's still many more questions I have. First of all, I think this is a fascinating thing, and a thing whose time has come. And glad that um, God has laid hands upon you guys to do this. Should you want to make contact with the university? Uh, to support it, to find out what courses um, you can be involved in, um, how you can join the, the faculty, the staff, maybe even have a skill that they may want to use. Here is the contact information that you will need. Herbert Fletcher University is an online distance learning institution of the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists. They offer graduate programs for those who wish to further their education. To find out more, visit their website, hfuniversity.org. That's hfuniversity.org. Or call them at 305-712-3732. You may also write to them at Herbert Fletcher University, Post Office Box 3269, Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, 00681. Amen, and that is good information. In the small amount of time that's left to us, um, you call your, your faculty facilitators. You've got a particular story, and then sort of put a bow on this, anything else that you want to talk about in our time that's left. Well, we have a facilitator uh, that she, she is not Adventist, and she, she has taught for at least four or five different universities in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And she told us, uh, working for you has been very different. It's very spiritual. It's, it's a different experience that from any other institution. Mm. Um, uh, uh, and she really enjoys it. Um, she's always asking us, um, how can she help? How can do more in the university just to help? Amen. Not, not to, to pay a paycheck, but just to help. Uh -huh. she, she loves the, the, the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned you have chaplains and counselors and other kinds of things. Uh, sort of adjunct to, to your, your, your teaching staff. That's right. We have all the services that are needed for the students, chaplain, counselor, uh, academic counselors. We have uh, all the, the service, uh, student services that are required mm -hmm. for, for, to help our students in every way we can. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is a full service thing. Um, and um, to me, it's a fascinating new area and one whose time has come for those who need the education but can't afford to take time to go to a brick and mortar school. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful institution. These are great guys, good looking guys. Sorry they're married, they got kids. <laughs> you can't, that can't help you. But they are God's men for this particular time and are doing a fabulous job. This is something you may want to look into or if you have individuals, you may want to take this information to your pastor or to a church leader that you would like to see get more training and uh, this is a school that can do it for you, Herbert Fletcher University. Uh, this is a tool in God's hands for these days for training up leadership for tomorrow. Well, our time has fast slipped into eternity. Allow me now in closing to wish you both grace and peace through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and God bless. <laughs>